Hey everybody, this is Jan from an Alaskan Crafter. How's everybody doing today? We're doing pretty good here. Uh, we're kind of feeling a lull. Uh, the weather has been pretty overcast, kind of that dark, dreary overcast. Had a little snow sleet yesterday. So the snow is really wet, so it kind of gives it that damp, dank, just feeling. And here we are already getting very close to the end of February. <sighs> Some people in the lower 48, minus the crazy weather in California and other areas, are actually starting to talk about gardening. And nothing just gets me a lot more excited in the springtime than getting ready to, to start a garden. Uh, we got a long way to go before we can actually even do anything outside. Anyway, that's not why we're here. Why are we here? Hmm, I was tagged by, uh, Charmed Grammy Crochet. You will see me look over here because that's where the questions are. And yes, tagged in the Spring Fling 2023. So, here we go. See, oh, no, we can't make them bigger. The first question is, what do you like to do in the spring that you can't do in any, do in other times of the year? Well, springtime. This one is a hard question for me because, you know, it, our spring is different than everybody else's spring down in the lower 48. Even the more Arctic northern areas of the lower 48. But I'm going to have to say that um, I know a lot of people are going to go, Oh, that's like watching grass grow. Anyway, I love to see and hear the ice breaking up on the, on the river. Which means that the creek that flows closest to our house, all the snow starts breaking through, melting the ice, et cetera, et cetera. And we can hear it. Uh, that, that great big whoosh noise of a fast running creek. So uh, going from no sound to sound in spring, that's something that I really enjoy uh, the anticipation for. Because we know when we start hearing that creek come down the mountain, then things are really starting to thaw up there. So it's going to start trickling on down here. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so the second question. What is your favorite springtime flower? And again, I'm going to get a lot of no, you really? Yes, really. I love the dandelion flower. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with it. It's uh, one, it's the first flower that blooms here. So that's the first uh, food for the bees and any of the other pollinating insects. So yeah, I, I do enjoy that. Um, young enough, you can make uh, dandy <clears throat> dandy lion salad with the leaves with the actual flower you can make dandy lion wine you can make dandy lion jellies or jams um you pardon me you can make salves there's just a lot of different things you can do with this flower um do i keep them all over no they do get mowed around the house where we have our grass area. But any other place, um, no, they're, they're left. And actually, when we put in the garden boxes that you guys see out there, um, we literally had to take a shovel and dig down quite deep and the root was huge. I'm not exaggerating. It was huge. The plant was massive. 
Um, and I got, I was sad. I was sad. What can I say? Uh, but we have plenty around here because obviously they, you know, are our wish makers. You, <laughs> you make you wish or you make your wish and you blow. So I have also taken, taken the dandelion seeds that we make wishes on and I have put them in resin and I have made, um, like paperweights or something like that with, and those are actually pretty doggone cool. So yeah, that, that plant is multi-purpose plant. Okay. Number three, what is your favorite thing about spring? Well, I have to say that I think with a lot of people that live in, um, areas that, uh, <sighs> show new growth, uh, Mother Earth waking back up, and um, the green, uh, the the smells, which can kind of be off-putting, because, uh, you know, you start smelling um, some of the things that have been underneath the snow for a while, so it can get kind of meh, but not as bad as fall. Anyway, I digress. Um, so, yeah, just watching everything, uh, the rebirth of everything. Our chickens just really are, they are like waking up. The dogs are definitely coming out of a, a winter funk. So are we. Um, so, yeah, just watching everything rebloom is definitely a favorite thing and i have to say the snow going away because by the time you know spring is starting i'm i'm ready for a new season definitely so number four what is the weather like in your area well our spring starts a lot later than most uh, of the lower 48 we don't actually, uh, I'm going to say May, uh, end of May is when we really start seeing some uh, spring temperatures. Uh, April, yeah, we're kind of sort of starting, but we can see anything from below zero to 70 degrees. Uh, it can be quite crazy, but you know, hey, it's Alaska. Don't like what the weather is come back inside, go back out in about five, 10 minutes and your life will be totally different because so is the weather. Let's see, when do you start a garden if you have one? Um, we start our garden inside. Uh, we take a, a conference size room table and uh, I use reuse <clears throat> uh, solo style cups and plant my seeds and germinate them in the house. To put them outside, it's kind of a general rule that um, the leaves on the tree have to be at least the size of a quarter. Um, there are other old older myths. Um, but again, depending upon what spring has done, maybe we've had um, a week or two of 70 degree weather uh, and no snow and the soil is warm enough, we can put our seeds out earlier. I don't know if people are aware that when you start your gardens in the house, just a little tidbit, and you live in a colder climate, um, you have to do what's called hardening off, meaning you take your indoor plants or the plants that you've germinated inside and you take them outside for a few hours. You bring them back in the house. Uh, you do that for a couple days. Then again, you take them out for a few more hours. Some people go ahead and they put their plants out all day long. As long as the temperatures are equal to what you have had in your house that's fine other than that they'll get cold they get cranky you know they go oh i'm melting because it's too cold because we know it melts in the cold 
Okay, so let's see. Uh, do you celebrate Easter? Probably not in the traditional way that uh, most people celebrate. Uh, our celebration is the renewal of life. Uh, which goes with uh, the new plants, including the weeds, etc., are um, popping up out of the ground. Um, we do, uh, and again, depending upon, because Easter this year, I think, is April. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, we do try to... Um, excuse me, go back to the pond and see what, uh, how far it's progressed from winter to said springtime. Um, we don't and haven't for many, many years done any, you know, big dinners or anything like that. Uh, with Jeff Lopes work, it was pretty difficult to do things like that. Uh, some years he was home, some years he was coming home, some years he was going to work. So just depending. Now, the kids did always get their Easter baskets because, you know, even up here in the frigid cold, the Easter bunny does come. And one year our driveway was impassable. And how it happened, I have no idea. But we tried to explain to the kids that, you know, the Easter Bunny was really having a hard time coming up the driveway because the mud was hip deep and he was having a hard time bouncing through it. He even tried to come through the woods and it just didn't happen. Lo and behold, I don't know how, but they got Easter baskets that year and boy, I tell you, the Easter Bunny made big liars out of Jeff Lope and I. But I suppose that's a good thing. Okay. Do you crochet or knit anything special for spring? No. No. Um, never have. And I don't know. I just, I crochet what I, what I crochet. What is your favorite spring color? Well, so many, like so many other people, I do like the pastels, but, um, and I sound like a broken record, so I apologize, but living in uh, an area where you get a lot of snow, it does feel towards the end of winter that everything is just black and white. You have the darkness of the trees, the white of the snow, or if it hasn't snowed in a while, the snow is dirty looking. So I have to say, it's not just pastel colors, but I like the really bright, uh, vivid colors. It just, you know, makes you feel uh, upbeat, alive, uh, get a jiggy on with it, you know. So uh, favorite color, spring color, uh, well, I guess green all kinds of different greens because that's usually the color that comes up first is um, the leaves on the trees and the greening of the new plants coming up. So uh, all kinds of different shades of green. Sorry, Lala. Uh, do you spring clean? <laughs> I'm so glad Jeff Lope's not in the house. Oh my gosh. I think he'd probably fall over laughing. No, I do not spring clean. No, 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 no. It's not in my... Yeah, it, it, it's not in my inventory of things. Um, he knew when he married me I was not Susie Homemaker. Um, we do spring clean around the house. When the snow melts, there's all kinds of debris from the winds, from, uh, I mean... We've had our neighbor's garbage in our yard, um, and they're way up there, and I'm sure, depending upon how the wind is blowing, they may have our garbage in their yard, too, or down on the road. So we do uh, pick up as much as we can around around the property and down on the road, and 
so on and so forth. So that's our spring cleanup, literally. Let's see. Last question is, do you go anywhere for spring break? No. Uh, never have. You know, the kids got maybe, I think, maybe a week off school. Um, Jeff, like I said, his schedule was just so uh, erratic. He had what uh, what was called the Kelly system. Um, so he could like, he could be working his shifts, uh, during Easter or Easter break. So we, we never really did anything. Um, we did maybe fun things around here. Um, but you know, when the kids were really young, we would go to the swimming pool or, um, we would go to one of the uh kids kids big fun house hi Lolo. um you know they used to have a place like called the dis uh the discovery zone or something like that where they're big uh ball pits and slides but all of it was indoors um oh see ya <laughs> yuck um but other than that no we did not do much of anything um I'm supposed to tag like 10 people and uh, so many people have been tagged. I can't even think of anybody who has not been tagged already. So here's your tag. <clears throat> tag, you're it. If you have not done this, uh, please. Uh, if you're a content provider, do it. And if you're one of my awesome, awesome Yarny families, give the answers in, in the um, comment section because I would really like to know what you do and all that stuff with all the questions during springtime. And I think I'm going to have to put some WD-40 on this chair because it's squeaking. Let's see, what is it squeak this way? Yep. <laughs> anyway... Uh, I hope this Friday, um, just brings a lot of good joys for the weekend to come and, uh, do some, something fun, whether it's crochet, knitting, whatever it may be, just do something for yourself, keep your mental health sane, <laughs> uh, and I, I've got this in the back of my head. I want. I would really like for everybody to go watch Nancy from She's Got Yarn 2, her latest video. She basically said everything that I wanted to say in my video. And then some Mad Mimi's crochet and farming animals. Um, you know, she... Uh, she is just a wonderful person. Um, she is one that'll tell you as it is. Um, she doesn't do it to hurt people's feelings. And she doesn't say things unless you're like, okay, tell me the truth. She's going to tell you the truth. And I have to tell you, that's just very uh, awesome to me. Uh, if somebody says, tell me the truth, and they're going to get ticked off at you because you've told them the truth, then don't say, tell me the truth. <laughs> truth hurts, yes. But yeah, anyway, big old tangent. Anyhow, if you are not subscribed, and I don't know who couldn't be subscribed to Mad Mimi's uh, Crochet and Farming Animals, and she knits... Um, she paints, she, uh, she takes us on field trips. Um, a lot of times she, she does it in the summertime. She takes us to the Santa Claus house. She takes us kayaking, um, just, you know, Kramer, uh, Kramer filled, Kramer frill filled. Can't remember the name of it where a lot of, 
um, birds migrate to, please go subscribe to her and give her a shout out in one of your videos. Or if you're not a content provider, ask some of your peeps to say, hey, can you do me a favor and shout out Mad Mimi, Laura, Lala, Egg Bega? Um, yeah, AKA all that stuffs. Uh, she does have a sidekick. Her name is Persephone, Per Sniffers, Sniffers. She's a calico cat. She adores Laura. And if you've been with Laura from the beginning of Persephone, Persephone was like, no, I don't like you, lady. Back up. No. <laughs> now she just can't get enough of Laura. So anyhow, please, please, please. We would love to see Laura's numbers go up to at least 3,000. Uh, I believe she's at 2,003 something. So, uh, please, yes. I know, like I said, this is probably kind of one of those, re everybody's already subscribed to Mam Mimi, but let's get the word out to the Yarny Streets all over the world that North Pole, Alaska has this crazy woman that lives in this madhouse that has a heart of gold, literally a heart of gold, and has been through some serious tragedy in her life and still has that heart of gold. And th th that's all I can say is please, Go subscribe to Mad Mimi. Tell your peeps, subscribe to Mad Mimi. Let's get her numbers up, even if we can, well over 3,000. She deserves it. Anyhow, oh my goodness, 22 minutes. Ah, 22 or 27, 22. Okay, we'll hit it right now. So, everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe. And as uh, Sam and Mike say... Get some quality crafting time in and some quality family time in also. Everybody have a great weekend. Talk to you later. Love y'all. Bye.